Hello and welcome back to the Roblox Studio Brookhaven tutorial series and in this video we're going to be making a house system so you can buy the house and then you can spawn it at the plot that you claim. So let's just get straight into it. The first thing we're going to do is the plot system. I'm just going to here, we're just going to import something. This is what I'm going to be working with, this is not made by me, this is um, made by Darwin, thank you Darwin. Okay so here inside the plot so you just make a group and inside the group is going to be a string value and then the string value is going to be called current owner and the value is going to be set to nothing, nothing there. On the screen this is just like this little fun thing here, I love it, it's quite nice, it's quite a nice cartoony style. Um, anyway, um, we're going to, here we've got a centre position, this is relatively important so make sure you've got one just in the middle, name it centre pause. This is the ground also quite important this is where the house will be placed upon and then these are just like around the house outside so inside this area the reason i've done this is it's just it's better than a sign i didn't do this too far i did not build this this was pyro darwin who is the lead builder of tom haven anyway okay so here we're going to have like this is just going to be the screen and inside here we're going to add in a proximity font now this is just so that we can claim the plot Okay, um, we could just have it as like 0 0.5 will be fine, uh, 15 will be good, and then we just kind of want this quite high, so we'll just do 25, I guess, pretty good. And then we're going to add in a script. So the first thing we're going to do is the plot, which is going to be equal to script dot parent. Was it script dot parent dot parent dot parent dot parent? So it's our script dot parent dot parent dot parent. Instead, it says the second model. There we go. I think that's that's the just to check. Now we'll do the local hollow screen script dot parent dot parent dot parent and then local current owner plot plot wave child kind of okay so what we're gonna do is current owner dot change so once this value once that the once the object is changed in any way but most likely the value okay so first of all we're gonna check if it's empty if and if it is empty we need to set script dot parent we need to set this to en enabled equals true so that people can claim it and then here so the hollow screen dot parent is going to be equal to game dot workspace now i think about it maybe it should probably be set to the plot okay and then else if it's not if it if it doesn't have if it's not empty doesn't matter whose name is in this value as long as it's not empty we need to do script dot parent dot enable we need to set that to false so no one else can claim it and then hollow screen dot parent equal to game dot replicated storage okay now after this one we're going to do script dot parent dot triggered connect to function add in the player and then if current owner dot value is equal to empty then we're going to set the current owner dot value equal to player dot name so pretty much checking is this plot occupied or not if it's not occupied then we can claim it and then so player dot plot so we're gonna add a string value or something inside so we're going to add a string value inside the player in a second and then so this will be we'll just set it to the plot dot name and then wait just a second or wait to just you don't have to put anything in here just leave it as, as that the script dot parent dot enabled equals false and down here now this bit is quite important um when the player removes so the player removing is when the player leaves the game obviously when that happens we need to make sure that if player dot name equals equals the current owner value dot value then the current owner dot value equals nil equals nothing so if player dot so if player dot name equals equals to the current owner dot value then the current owner dot value equals nil and then script dot parent dot enabled equals true so what that means once you've left, then no one owns the plot anymore, it's no, long, no longer occupied and anyone can claim it. That bit is done. Let's move on to buying the house, because obviously that's quite an important bit. Let's go to Data Manager, and if you don't have any of this, then you need to watch my previous videos. I've got three previous videos that you can watch. You can skip out on the third one, it's just a fun little animations GUI. But if you go to the first two, it's just all about this, like data saving and, and so on. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is obviously function save house data and for this I'm actually just going to be quite smart and just copy and paste this here and then just change this to save house data then local houses player dot houses houses 
let's yeah just change that all to houses houses yeah and then house data that's another point we need to add another data value here so local house data it's going to be equal to data store service get a data store and brand new data store and it's literally just going to be called house data pretty simple you don't need a fancy name or anything literally just house, house data pretty simple and then buy value literally the exact same as save car here except for houses okay so now now we're in here we're going to add a few stuff so the first thing is going to be local plot as i as i said a few minutes ago we need to add a string value into the player and so the first thing we're going to do we're going to name it literally just could be called plot if you change the name it could break your script so i would just advise keeping it as this um, that goes for anything else you want to change just be just be aware so dot value equals that and then plot dot parent equals player obviously if, if you know that if you change this name you've got to change the name in other scripts when i put plot then that's fine go go for it but if it does ever then always make sure to go back through the video and make sure every single name is correct. So the next thing we're going to do just above this cars will be lo local houses equals instance dot new folder and then houses dot name is going to be equal to houses quite simple and then houses dot parent is going to be equal to the player and then here we're literally just going to do a quick copy and paste and then again house and house instead of this we just need to put in the Houses, I mean, again, we need to locate storage, locate storage dot houses, which I know isn't a thing yet, we need to add that. But okay, I think after that, we need to do this. So again, if we just quite simply copy and paste again, so local house name and then local house value, just go around, just go around changing these, make sure it all makes sense. And then just above car data, we're going to do local house data, which is going to be equal to house, which can be related to the previous house data, which is a global data store. And then we're just going to get async. And then the player dot user ID here, or just these two fancy brackets. So down here, we're just going to add a bit of code, which means it means it means it's, it it just works a bit better. So first of all, this save car data, quite simply, just above it, we're just going to do save house data. And if you're wondering why every time I've got the house above it, I don't know why, it's just OCD thing. <laughs> anyway, um, the thing we want, to, the other thing we want to add is um, obviously just duplicate this and then save house data quite simply. And then above this, we're going to do game.players.player removing again. So this is if they leave the game. That's what a lot of developers forget, they always forget about what happens if the player leaves the game. So let's not forget that this time we're gonna So we're going to do if game dot workspace find first child then we're gonna get the player dot names house So we're gonna look to see if there is a house under the the player's name Then if there is we're going to game dot workspace find first child player dot name and then we're gonna get their house and then we're gonna quite simply destroy it quite simply get it done and then just under here to do local player plot going to be equal to player dot plot game dot workspace by first child then player plot dot value dot current owner dot value equals nothing and then player dot plot dot value equals nothing again so that's kind of resets it which is perfect okay i think that should be done but just before we do anything we're gonna add a folder in here and it's literally just going to be called houses exactly the same as cars but for houses then in here this is as you see this is where you put the cars and so this is going to be you guessed it where we put the houses i actually only have one house here i'm just going to paste into this this is just going to be a small cottage quite nice it, again this was built by pyro darwin big thanks i appreciate it but anyway let's do the coding of the phone so as you can see here this is going to be where you spawn in your thing you're going to spawn it here under houses but I think before actually before we do this we're going to have to make a house dealership or more like housing agency I guess but anyway we're going to add a brand new screen UI actually just to make it a bit simpler we're going to duplicate the car dealership and then just rename it to housing agency perfect 
and then obviously just do a bit of configuring. Okay, so the last bit of configuring we need to do is this. So obviously this is the starter car, we're just going to do the small cottage. Perfect. This one I've just got is coming soon because I'm sure you can add way more cars in the future. I've just got one here. It adds a bit of suspense to the game. It's always a bit of fun. This small cottage, um, we're going to have to rename the buy button to small cottage. Like that. Um, it's 500 is fine. Again, you change this to um, to change the price label to as much as you want. Okay, so now we're going to add in a script into here and before we edit it, so let's just add it. And now before we edit it, we just have to have a look at this GUI handler. Now, we are not working with the car dealer anymore. We are working with the housing agent who is this guy. Also, this like this animation thing is done by Darwin again. Thank you. So this is going to be the housing agent, the house agent, I guess. We've got a proximity prompt here. Perfect. And so what we got want to do is go to the GUI and then we're just going to game.workspace then dot house agent dot head. We're gonna to go to the head and then we're going to get the proximity prompt. So the prompt dot triggered and it's just gonna trigger that. So that so that now works. Now let's get to this. First thing we need is replicated storage, then the house's frame, then the player, then the houses, then the remotes, then the events. We're also just going to add um, a house shop info. Then we're going to add a module script. And don't, don't worry, don't worry. It's not that complicated. It's not as complicated as you're thinking. We're literally just going to name it house shop info. Is local, well, the name of the script, I guess we can do that. Turn that, quite simple. So the first thing is we're just going to add these square brackets and it's going to be called small cottage, which is which we're just going to be equal to fancy brackets, money, which could be equal to one just for now. And then that's it. Um, if you want to add another one, there's no brackets there. And then do another one here, but I'm not going to add one. But if you did want to, equals, you know, pretty much just copy and paste this. You can delete this, add it. I might add more houses, so I'll just leave that for now. So equals require, and then replicate storage dot house shop info done okay so then for i frame in pairs house frame and then get the children of the house frame i guess <laughs> and then if frame is a is a image label and then then what we're going to do is for i price text in pairs frame get the children off the frame and then if price text is a text label and price text dot name equals equals price label then price text dot text equals little pound sign and then house shop info frame dot name which is going to be the name of the house and then dot money which gives us which returns the money okay then we're going to drop two ends here then for i button in pairs then we're going to get the frame and then the children of the frame and then if button is a text button then button dot mouse button one up connect function local price is equal to house shop info and then the frame dot name dot money and then if player dot houses find first child and then the frame dot name dot value equals equals false so if it equals to false so if you do not own the house then events and then we'll have to actually add, um, add this event and then dot buy house fire server then frame dot name and the price okay so that's that script done and now let's go add the events so if we go inside the remote, remotes inside events and so here where you see buy car just duplicate that and name it buy house 
Okay, now we're going to go to the remote handler and we're going to add in this local by house, which we're going to do equal to events with child by house. Pretty simple, pretty easy. And okay, so under here we're going to do by house, then dot on server event, connect to function. We're going to get the player, the name of the house, and the price. And so if player dot houses, and I think an easy way of doing this is just getting that, and then just changing this to houses, 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 <laughs> um, name of house. So name of house, name of house, and that should work. And then you already have this house. Apart from that, I think that should be all good. And I think there's one more event we need to add. As you can see, there's a spawn car. Go back to remotes. So remotes, events, and then this spawn car where that you just gonna duplicate it and then name it spawn house and so this spawn car we're going to copy and we're gonna paste to spawn and so then here we're going to do after the spawn car we're going to do local spawn house which could be equal to events wake child and then spawn the house. And then under the spawn car here, if you just want to write this, um, if I, I've just I've just written it out already. It's quite a big script, so I thought I'd make it so you just have to copy it. N none of me talking. <laughs> and so yeah, this is this is what you wrote. So if you have a house that and you and you do no longer have a plot, so if you don't have a plot, so if you have the house. So if you have the house and you have a plot, so if it's not equal to zero, then you can then you can spawn the house. Then you can spawn the house that you own. Okay, so I think once you get this, once you have this, this is the why the center position, that's where the house is gonna be. And so I think we'll just try that out. We'll just see if it works. I hope I haven't forgotten anything. Okay. Okay, so here we go to the house agent and we need to interact. We open this, we're just going to get the small cottage. And we actually don't have enough money, oh that's not good. Okay, so we go to the house agent here, we need to interact. We buy a house. And so we should now own that house. So if we go to a plot over here, we're going to claim the plot. So this is now gone. And now if we go to phone, house, small cottage and there you go it is here now I haven't completely finished with the phone GUI this does work and so if you go here to the phone GUI so so if you go here go here as you can see you go to the apps to the houses here which if we just make visible now here are all the houses that you want to add so small cottage is only one we have so we get rid of that and then just make this maybe coming soon or something so coming soon okay and then so this small cottage spawned is not spawned and then here is the script quite simple this is the script you need i just forgot to record myself um, coding it that is the script you need and that should be the end of it that should be everything working now so if we if we spawn in here and we should be able to play it and it should be able to work get the house agent by the small cottage then after claiming the plot we will be able to spawn the house okay so claim the plot and then we go to the houses small cottage and it's here it's here um this is just a bit of extra coding i've done so front door e to enter kind of simple e to, uh, e to leave e to, e to enter e to exit and then this is just a lovely little house made by pyro darwin let's have a video of me walking around the house as the outro